Well, welcome back to our video of we're dealing with the chain rule this time around. And uh, but this this particular section is on uh, problems of the uh, more advanced chain rule type. Uh, I do want to remind you guys that remember this is uh, this video is uh, basic, basically focusing on taking the derivative of the, using the chain rule, and uh, you're still going to be doing lots of problems of figuring out the equation of the tangent line, finding velocity when you have distance, when you have acceleration, it's the second derivative of your distance formula, and doing all these interesting physics and other application problems. But right now we're learning how to take the uh, derivative using the chain rule uh, when you have uh, these more advanced problems. So just to remind you about the chain rule, which is the taking the derivative of a composition. I have f of g of x, the derivative of that would end up being f prime of g of x times g prime of x. But I think it works better when you state it in English that when you take, when you have an inside and outside, that's that composition function. f is on the outside, g of x is on the inside. To take derivative of these composition uh, formulas, you take the derivative of the outside, you leave the inside the same, then times the derivative of the inside. And those are the rules that we've been really focusing on, but now we're going to go for this more advanced type problem where we're going to start combining the product rules and the quotient rules inside with these chain rules to make, to give you the uh, ability to take the derivative of much harder and harder functions. So take a look at this uh, next example we have here. Um, h of x is equal to 3x squared plus 5x plus 2 divided by 4x cubed plus 12, all raised to the seventh power. Now, your mission, to take the derivative of this guy. So, all labeling is everything in calculus, so this is going to be h prime of x. Now, the big question is, what am I going to use to take the derivative of this guy? I see a quotient in the middle of this thing, but I see the seventh power on the outside. So, the real question you have to ask yourself is, what's the big picture? What I see is a function on the inside raised to that seventh power on the outside. And that seventh power on the outside, that's telling me inside outsides, I got the chain rule. So chain rule, derivative of the outside, inside stays the same time derivative of the inside. And you're right, once I take derivative of the inside, that'll end up being the quotient rule, but that's further down the road. The big picture that you should see is I've got a function raised to an outside power, and that's chain rule. So chain rule, derivative of the outside. The seven pops out front. The inside, the 3x squared plus 5x plus 2 divided by 4x cubed plus 12 stays the same, raised to the 6th power, don't forget to subtract 1, times, now, derivative of the outside, inside stays the same, times the derivative of the inside. What do you see on the inside? On the inside, I got 3x squared plus 5x plus 2 divided by 4x cubed plus 12. That's the quotient rule. Quotient rule, derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Quotient rule, derivative of the top, derivative of 3x squared plus 5x plus 2 is 6x plus 5, derivative of the top times the bottom, just recopy it, 4x cubed plus 12, derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top, recopy it, 3x squared plus 5x plus 2 times the derivative of the bottom. What's the derivative of 4x cubed plus 12? That would be 12x squared, and the derivative of 12 would be 0. All over the bottom, 4x cubed plus 12 squared. And this would be my solution. Now, of course, we could clean this up and, you know, fold this part out, distribute the 12x uh, squared there, and clean it up, combine like terms, so forth and so on. But honestly, what we're really looking for is, the, in this case, the combination rules, the chain rule and the product rule in action. So we right now would like you to leave these guys uh, alone. This is the kind of answer that we're actually looking for and stuff. So you can, can see the chain rule and see that times or the inside quotient rule that we're actually doing and stuff. So let's take a look at another example. next example I have is a of x is equal to 3x squared times the square root of 5x cubed minus 10. Pause, hesitate, and ask yourself, what do you see? What's the rule? And if you, you know, kind of read it to yourself, 
you actually will understand what the big picture is all about. A of x equals 3x squared times the square root of 5x cubed minus 10. With that times in the middle, this is a big product rule problem. So I'm going to go a prime of x equals product rule. Derive the first times the second plus the first time derive the second. Product rule, derive the first. Derive of 3x squared is 6x. Derive the first times the second times the square root of 5x cubed minus 10 plus the first 3x squared times the derivative of the second. Now, to take the derivative of the second, guys, the square root of 5x cubed minus 10. We don't do square roots. That's a half a power. And that's half a power is on the outside. The 5x cubed minus 10 is on the inside. So to take the derivative of the second guy, you actually have to use the chain rule. Derivative of the outside, 1 half pops out front. The inside, 5x cubed minus 10 stays the same. Then subtract 1. That'll be a raised to the minus 1 half. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. Drew the outside, inside stays the same, time drew the inside. Drew the inside is 15x squared. And there's my solution. Again, there's lots of different ways you can clean this guy up. Uh, if you want to get that back of the book look to it, you could say this is 6x times the square root of 5x cubed minus 10. Plus, combine your like terms here, I have got 3x squared times 15x squared. That's uh, 45 x to the fourth over and that two is on the bottom and a negative uh, exponent puts it on the bottom a half a power is a square root so that's a square root on the bottom 5x cubed minus 10. I just want to show you what the back of the book look is to this guy so there's my answer for the for in terms of checking your answers and stuff however this is what we're really interested in because this shows us that you know how to take the derivative of the uh, combination rules. There's my product rule in action, and there's the chain rule at towards the end. And honestly, if you type this in on web work, it'll still, exactly the way we have it written, will still give you 100% full credit. Let's try this next example. I have g of x equals the cosine of x cubed times 2x cubed minus 3 raised to the fourth power. Now, what's the big picture? g of x equals the cosine of x cubed times 2x cubed minus 3 to the fourth power. Again, with that times in the middle, this is another product rule. Big picture is the product rule. Drew the first times the second plus the first times drew the second. But again, these are these more advanced problems. Let's take a look at that first guy. Drew the first. Let's drew the cosine of x cubed. Cosine's on the outside, x cubed. The angle is on the inside with trig functions. That's a chain rule problem. You chain rule, derivative the outside, derivative cosine is negative sine, the angle, the inside, stays the same, x cubed, times the derivative the inside, which is 3x squared. So this is the derivative of the first, but remember, this was a product rule. It's the derivative of the first times the second times 2x cubed minus 3 to the fourth power plus the first, the cosine of x cubed times the derivative of the second. This is a 2x cubed minus 3 to the fourth power. Again, uh, the 2x cubed minus 3 is on the inside, fourth power is on the outside. So again, it's a chain rule. Drew the outside, the 4 pops out front, the inside. The 2x cubed minus 3 raised to the third power derivative of the outside. Inside stays the same. Times drew the inside, derivative of 2x cubed is 6x squared. Derivative of minus 3 is 0, and there is my solution. What do we have here? This was a big picture, was the product rule. Drew the first times the second plus the first times drew the second. And the two parts that make up the product both required the chain rule. This is that makes these problems much more difficult. But take your time and always stop, pause, and ask yourself, what's the big picture on these particular problems? And again, in terms of leaving your answer, this is exactly the way in this chapter what we would like to see. You can see the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. This is what we're looking for. So let's take a look at another example. This next one, problem number four that I created for you guys. f of x is equal to sine to the fourth of 3x squared plus 5. Sine to the fourth of 3x squared plus 5. 
Now, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to rewrite this to truly understand what this problem is. What does that for really mean right here? That means the entire trig function, that's the trig with the angle, is being raised to the fourth power. So this is f of x is equal to parentheses sine of 3x squared plus 5 the whole thing to the fourth power. I've yet to take a derivative. I'm just rewriting this thing so I can actually understand what this problem is. Now what do I see? Paul's hesitate. After you clean him up, look at him. I got this sine of 3x squared uh, plus 5 on the inside raised to the fourth power on the outside. This is the chain rule. Fourth power is on the outside and I got this function on the inside. So chain rule, so to take derivative, chain rule. Derivative the outside, inside stays the same time derivative the inside. Derivative the outside, 4 pops out front, the inside, the sine of 3x squared plus 5 stays the same, raised to the third power, times the derivative of the inside. The inside is the sine of 3x squared plus 5. Well, the sine's on the outside, the 3x squared plus 5 is on the inside. It's another chain rule. The derivative of sine is cosine. The angle, the function, 3x squared plus 5 stays the same, times the derivative of the inside of that. The inside of that is the 3x squared plus 5, and the root of that would be clearly 6x. So what you have here is what we call a chain rule within a chain rule. And again, these combo rules that you're we learn as these more advanced problems that we're doing here. So you take the root of the outside, inside stays the same, and you keep taking the root of the insides until you run out of insides. That's what you do when you have a chain rule within a chain rule. You want to see the root of the outside, the inside stays the same times the derivative of the inside of that. I got a sine of a function, derivative of a sine of a function is a cosine of the function. The inside, the angle, stays the same, times through the inside. One other little comment about this particular problem is this. When you're dealing with trig, always pay attention to this, that your angles never change. When I'm my function versus my first or second or derivatives, however many I take, look at the angle on every trig. The trig functions change due to the derivative, but the angle doesn't. The angle still is 3x squared plus 5. That's the angle on the sine. Look at the angle on the cosine. It's still 3x squared plus 5. And then at last you have times 6x, which is the derivative of the inside. All right. Let's take a look at this guy. I've got r of theta. Just to throw a different letter at you guys, theta being the angle here. r of theta equals the tangent of 2 theta cubed minus 4 pi divided by 5 theta squared. Okay. Again, pause, hesitate, and look at this problem and think, what's the big picture? I got the tangent of 2x cubed minus 4 pi divided by 5 theta squared. Well, I clearly see that big divide there. It's a quotient rule. Quotient rule. Drew the top times the bottom minus the top times drew the bottom all over the bottom squared. So let's do that. Theta, or r prime of theta, always label your derivatives here. R prime of theta would be equal to drew the top times the bottom minus the top times drew the bottom all over the bottom squared. Let's take a look at this top. The tangent of 2 theta cubed minus 4 pi. All right. It's tangents on the outside. The angle, the inside is 2 theta cubed minus 4 pi. Well, chain rule. Drew tangent is pure memorization, secant squared. Drew the outside, the inside, 2 theta cubed minus 4 pi stays the same. Derivative the outside, inside stays the same time through the inside. Derivative of 2 theta cubed is going to be, bring the power out front, 6 theta squared minus, what's derivative of 4 pi? Well, 4 is a constant, pi, 3.14159269, whatever. It's a constant. Derivative of that would be 0. So there's derivative the outside, inside stays the same time through the inside. That is the derivative of the top. But remember, the big picture was a quotient rule. It's drew the top times the bottom, 5 theta squared, minus the top, just recopy it, the tangent of 2 theta cubed minus 4 pi, times the derivative of the bottom. What's the derivative of 5 theta squared? Clearly, 10 theta. All over, divided by the bottom, 5 theta squared, 5 theta squared, squared, sorry, write it correctly here all over the bottom squared. So it's drew the top times the bottom minus the top times drew the bottom all over the bottom squared. Now yes, there's lots of cleaning up here. 5 theta squared squared, you can write that as 25 theta to the fourth if you want to, whatever you'd like. But however, 
this is really what we want to see. We don't want to see too much cleaning up. Don't worry, we got future chapters to worry about that when we start to uh, use these in our physics examples and our uh, related rate problems and, and optimization problems that are coming in your future. But right now, we're interested in you guys learning how to take derivative of these more complicated functions. This is a quotient rule. Drew the top, which uses the chain rule. Times the bottom, minus the top, times rear the bottom, all over the bottom squared. And let's try one more. I've got here f of x is equal to 10x to the squared plus 3x minus 2 divided by x squared plus 2x plus 7 quantities cubed. Pause. Think about it. What's the big picture? What do you see? I see garbage divided by garbage. That's the idea of what you got to see. You got to look at these problems and go, what's the big picture? I see that big long division right in the middle of this thing. That right there is telling me that this is a quotient rule. So let's use the quotient rule again. Quotient rule, go to the top times the bottom, minus the top times the rear of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. Drew the top. What's the root of 10x squared plus 3x minus 2? Well, the root of 10x squared is uh, 20x plus the root of 3x is 3. The root of the top times the bottom, x squared plus 2x plus 7 cubed. The root of the top times the bottom minus the top, 10x squared plus 3x minus 2 times the derivative of the bottom. Now what do you see on the bottom? I got x squared plus 2x plus 7 quantity cubed. I see x squared plus 2x plus 7 on the inside, cube on the outside. That screams chain rule. Chain rule, derivative the outside, the 3 pops out front, the inside, the x squared plus 2x plus 7 stays the same, raised to the squared power. Derivative the outside, inside stays the same, times the derivative of the inside. Derivative of x squared plus 2x is 2x plus 2. So, through the top times the bottom minus the top times through the bottom, use the chain rule, through the outside, inside stays the same, times through the inside, all over the bottom, x squared plus 2x plus 7 cubed, the bottom squared. And there's the answer that we want. Now you're right in terms of cleaning up, power to a power on multiply, you could type this in on web work as uh, x squared plus 2x plus 7 to the sixth power, you bet. But this is what we want to see. We want to see whether you see how to take derivative of these more complicated functions. So again, in terms of the applications that we're going to be doing with this stuff in your future, um, we, I mean, clearly, we're going to be looking at this as a distance function, and you need to calculate the velocity function. So if I need, need to figure out the velocity after two seconds, I'm going to plug in for time, or in this case, x is 2, and crunch me out some kind of an answer for this guy. Uh, so all those things that we did way back when in chapters 2.1 and 2.2 are still being used, but our focus is on taking the derivative of these much more complicated functions. Hopefully this has been helpful. And I'll see you on the next video.